Okay, guys, let's start with some soft belly breathing. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so the pain responses, physiological pain responses are increased heart rate, Respiratory rate and pattern may shift from normal, for example, increase, decrease, or change in pattern. This also includes increased blood pressure and oxygen saturation may decrease. The pain ins- assessment is PQRST. P is provocation and palpation. Q is quality and quantity. R is region and radiation. S is severity and scale. T is timing and type. Prevention strategies. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary is the soldiers in the first line of defense. They're the structural barriers of the human body. The primary defenses prevent organisms from entering the body. This is skin, eyes, mouth, and GI. Secondary is pathogens that dodge the primary defense and gain entry into the body that begin to release waste and secretions and to cause the breakdown of cells and tissues. The presence of such chemicals activates a set of secondary defenses. This is phagocytosis, inflammation, and fever. Tertiary is the immunity against an infection that's achieved through the presence of antibodies that neutralizes or destroys toxins or disease-producing organisms. This includes active and passive. Lung sounds, wheezing, crackles, and ronchi. So wheezing is a squeaky, musical, continuous sound associated with air rushing through narrowed airways. This may be heard with or with or may be heard without a stethoscope. So with or without a stethoscope. They arise from small airways and usually do not clear with coughing. Crackles is a rattling sound caused by fluid or secretions in large airways. They're likely to change with coughing or suctioning. Ronchi is lower pitched, coarse, continuous snoring sounds, and they arise from large airways. The effects of immobility. Immobility can put you at greater risk for developing pneumonia, pressure ulcers, and constipation. Nursing interventions for the immobile patient. This includes preventing pressure injury, atelectasis, and constipation. Lab results. So hematocrit is 43 to 49% in males, 38 to 44% in menstruating women. Hemoglobin is 13.2 to 17.3 in males, and 11.7 to 15.5 in females. The platelet count is 150,000 to 400,000. White blood cells is 4,000 to 11,000. The minimum urine output is 30 milliliters per hour. 9.0 to 10.5 is normal serum calcium level. 25 to 80 is normal vitamin D level. pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Potassium is 3.5 to 5. Magnesium is 1.8 to 2.5. Sodium is 135 to 145. Calcium is 4 to 5. Phosphorus is 2.5 to 4.5. CO2 is 35 to 45. And HCO3 is 22 to 26. Non-modifiable versus modifiable risk factors for disease processes. Non-modifiable is age, sex, ethnicity, and eating disorders. Modifiable is weight, calcium and vitamin D intake, smoking, alcohol, and exercise. Sleep disorders, narcolepsy, insomnia, and sleep apnea. Insomnia is the most common. This is the inability to get an adequate amount of sleep or feel rested. Acute, chronic, intermittent, and women or older adults are more prone. Narcolepsy is sudden attacks of sleep at inappropriate times. Sleep apnea is five or more breathing cessations lasting 10 or more seconds an hour during sleep. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Number one, physiological. This is food, water, and rest. Number two, safety. This is security. Number three, love and belonging. This is intimate relationships and friends. Number four, esteem. This is feeling of accomplishment. And number five, self-actualization. This is achieving one's full potential. Hypoxia. This is decreased tissue oxygenation. Cancer prevention. Avoidance of known or potential carcinogens. Modify associated factors appears to help reduce cancer risk. Removal of at-risk tissues reduces cancer risk for adult who is known for high risk developing a special type of cancer. 
Um, vaccination is a newer method of primary cancer prevention, such as HPV. Healthcare worker safety, preventing injuries and infection, promoting safety and preventing falls. Hygiene, there's total care, self-care, and partial care. Total care is where the nurse performs everything for the patient because the patient can't do it themselves. Self-care is where the patient can care for themselves. Partial care is patients that care for themselves with assistance. Elimination is causes potential imbalances and incontinence. The first actions are priorities. A skin biopsy client care is to gently wash the area with water and mild soap. Systemic versus localized inflammation. Inflammation can be categorized as either acute or chronic. Acute inflammation may be localized or systemic and has a short duration, hours or days. Chronic inflammation continues for weeks, months, or possibly years. It is usually systemic, affecting a large portion of the body. Examples of chronic inflammation include chronic, chronic inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and rheumatoid arthritis. RICE is rest, ice, compress, elevate, and ice controls, sw- helps control swelling. Prevention of aspiration is place the client in a high fowler or a chair, hygiene after meals. Therapeutic communication is empathy, clarifying, nonverbal, active listening, pause and silence, genuineness, and confrontation. Communication styles are passive, assertive, and passive aggressive. The components of communication are sender, encoder, receiver, decoding, and feedback. The communication phase for therapeutic relationships is pre-interaction, orientation, working, termination. Culture is a shared belief system, values, etc. that provides social structure for living, shapes what is acceptable, and influences the way people view themselves. Cultural considerations is using interpreters for language barriers, be aware of cultural differences and religious differences when it comes to healthcare decisions. Cultural competence Care is planned and implemented in a way that's sensitive to the needs of individuals, families, and groups from diverse populations within a society. Cultural conflict occurs when people become aware of cultural differences, feel threatened, and respond negatively. Cultural diversity, people of varying culture backgrounds, racial ethnicities, and religions, etc. Ethnicity is a sense of identification with a collective cultural group based on heritage. Ethnocentrism is a belief that the ideas, beliefs, and practices of one's own culture are superior to others. Stereotyping is when one assumes that all members of a culture or group act alike. Transcultural nursing is a nurse that has the knowledge and skills to adapt nursing care to cultural similarities and differences. Environmental control is a develop procedures for routine care, cleaning, and disinfection of environmental surfaces, especially frequently touched surfaces in patient care areas. Culture assimilation. This is when you adopt another culture that you are around. Culture shock is emotional, Emotional and mental reaction to a new and different culture. Culture blindness is the inability or refusal to recognize and appreciate the differences between cultures. And culture imposition is the beliefs, values, or practices that are forced upon a person or group. Culture health practices can be efficacious, which is helpful, neutral, which is either helpful, helpful nor harmful, or dysfunctional, which is harmful. The African American culture, they use folk healing and home remedies for treating illness. The Asian culture is good health. They believe that good health is achieved through yin and yang. They best, it is best for them to die with the body intact, having all their organs. The Hispanic culture is family is the primary unit. God gives health and illness for a reason and diet counseling may be necessary. The Muslim is discourage use of contraception, no pork or alcohol. This is the halal diet. They believe that Allah will determine when they die. Family members will wash the body of the deceased and bury as soon as possible. 
cremation is not allowed and you assign health care providers of the same sex. Native Americans, medicine men are heavily used, note taking is taboo, indirect eye contact is preferred, and the family should be included in the nursing care plan. Hawaiian is emphasis on preventative medicine, they're Christian, death is seen as a part of life, and they often use hope folk healing practices and they live healthy lifestyles. The Joint Commission is responsible for the National Patient Safety Goals. HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It was passed in 1996 and it's a federal law that sets a national standard to protect, protect medical records and other personal health information. Developmental factors is dangers and accidental death risk based on age. Home safety is preventing poisoning. You store chemicals in a locked cabinet, separate medications in a daily dosage container. The four C's of food safety are clean, cook, combat cross-contamination, and chill. Fall safety for elderly clients. At home, it's making sure there are no obstacles like a carpet or rug or anything they can trip and fall on. In the clinical setting, make sure the bed alarm and, and side rails are all up but not our, all four. Also make sure that they are aware of the medication side effects such as drowsiness and risk for blood thinners. Carbon monoxide is one of the leading causes of death from a fire. It's a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas released in the process of combustion. There is um, an inhalation injury is an, a risk for carbon monoxide poisoning. And uh, you advise clients to use a carbon monoxide detector in their home. Vector pathogens. This is a carrier of a disease causing agent from an infected individual to a non-infected individual or its food or environment. For example, mosquitoes carrying malaria parasites is a living organism, a living thing such as humans, animals, plants, and microbes. Race is rescue, alarm, confine, extinguish. Pass is pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Side rails. All four rails up is considered a restraint. A big danger to young children drowning and motor a big danger to young children is drowning and motor vehicle accidents. A diabetic who fasts in their culture will be respected and documented. You let the provider know and create a patient centered plan of care. Nutrition and diet education for a client with AIDS includes protein, high calorie, and increased fluids. The risk factors for osteoarthritis are trauma, being female, obesity, and being Asian. You monitor inflammation and atrophy for patients with osteoarthritis. Methotrexate is an immunosuppressant. You educate the client to avoid big crowds, monitor temperature, which could indicate fever and infection. Ibuprofen is commonly used for plantar fasciitis. Monitor risk factors for bleeding and ulcers. A patient post-op with a hip replacement is given a hip abductor pillow to stabilize the hip. Always use ice for acute inflammation. Crepitus is bone on bone. It's crunchy sounds and is caused by floating pieces that are floating in synovial fluid. The purpose of using antifungals, antibiotics, and antivirals is to stop the replication process. Pain. There's three types. Somatic, which is skin. Visceral, which is organ. And neuropathic, which is you're feeling pins and needles. Gabapentin is most commonly used for nerve pain. TB is airborne. COVID is airborne. Shingles is contact, but it's airborne if there's open wounds. RSV is droplet, MRSA or MRSA is contact, pneumonia is droplet, and influenza is droplet. PPE worn for contact is gown and gloves. PPE worn for droplet is gown, gloves, and mask. PPE worn for airborne is N95, gown, gloves, and face shield, and mask. Oh, wait, you have the N95 mask. Antiviral meds end in V-I-R. 
The purpose of taking antivirals is to slow the replication process and it's a lifelong medication. A patient that is immunocompromised, they're neutropenic, low white blood cells, and they wear a mask and gloves to keep safe from us. Educate them to avoid crowds, eat a healthy diet, protein, canned and cooked fruits and vegetables. They cannot eat raw fruit or vegetables and no flowers unless they're artificial. No sushi and no medium rare foods. <clears throat> there are two types of restraints, mechanical and chemical. The patient is at risk for dehydration, fluid imbalance, and skin breakdown. Equipment used for restraints are soft limb and the bed. Common accidental deaths in all ages, all, all age groups are motor, motor vehicle accidents, accidental overdose, and falls. Signs and symptoms of a DVT include warmth and swelling in legs. Range of motion, active versus passive. PROM is passive range of motion. This is dependent joint movement with assistance. AROM is active range of motion, independent joint movement. This is lifting the arm up and putting it down independently. Active range of motion of all joints may indicate that the patient is ready to ambulate. Osteoporosis is changes in calcium metabolism leading to possible formation of renal calculi. Decreased bone mass caused by multiple factors. Lack of calcium and estrogen or testosterone. Kyphosis is often present with patients with osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can impede healing of a fracture. Transfer devices. A mechanical lift is a hydraulic device used to transfer patients. A gait belt is a secure mechanism to hold the, the client when ambulating. Use caution with an osteoporosis patient, prolonged bed rest, and patients that are getting up for the first time. A walker is used with an unsteady gait with lower extremity weakness or cooperative partial weight-bearing client. A straight handle cane is used for hand weakness with good balance. A transfer board is used for spinal cord injury with good upper body strength. A standing assist device assists the client from sitting to a standing position. A fiber cast, fiberglass weight leg cast is for um, a weight-bearing client that is a cast shoe that occurs after the bone is healing is evident. <clears throat> Bucks traction. This is a pulley wheel to provide comfort by reducing muscle spasm and fracture immobilization. A deputrin contracture is a slowly progressive thickening of the palmar fascia resulting in flexion contracture of the fourth, which is your ring finger, and the fifth, which is your little finger of the hand. P-I-C-O-T, problem, intervention, comparison, outcome, and time. The nursing diagnosis priority and purpose the priority is patient. This is who you're going to see first. Promoting independence is allowing the person to perform ADLs to the best of their capacity. Plantar fasciitis. This is an inflammation of the fibrous tissue, which is a plantar fascia along the bottom of your foot that connects your heel bone to your toes. Do not apply heat therapy. Use ice, NSAIDs, and supportive shoes. A bunion ectomy is the surgery that removes the bunion. This is a six to 12 weeks of non weight bearing healing and you place a pillow to un elevate the foot. Bow legged and not knee. So the knees are poorly, poorly aligned as in genu valgum, which is knock knee or genu varum, which is bow legged. Muscle strength. We use the manual muscle test. This is the common way to test muscle strength. Rotator cuff tear causes. This is the inability to abduct the arm. This is the tear of the cuff by substantial trauma. Think a baseball player. Cortico corticosteroids are used to treat and the drop arm test is used to diagnose. Delegation is a nursing activity, skill or procedure that is transferred from a licensed nurse to a UAP in a selected patient care situation. A sprain is a stretch of a ligament. A strain is excessive stress on muscles or tendons. 
A complete fracture is where the bone is separated into two sections and the bone across the entire width of the bone. A compound fracture is a bone protruding through the skin. A fragility fracture is a fracture caused by osteoporosis. A compression fracture, they're produced by a loading force applied to the long axis of cancellous bones. They commonly occur in the vertebrae or of older patients with osteoporosis and are extremely painful. A pathological fracture occurs through areas, areas of weakened bone. A CT scan or MRI can confirm a fracture. If you have a CT scan, you check the, the, price, the presence and degree of rheumatoid arthritis involvement. Osteosarcoma. This is a type of bone cancer that usually develops in the osteoblast cells that form bone. This is treated with chemotherapy. Primary originates in the bone. Secondary originates outside of the bone. Osteomyelitis, think antibiotics and infection control. The signs and symptoms include elevated white blood cells, erythema, edema, warmth, fever, and acute pain. Four to six weeks of IV antibiotics, surgical wound irrigation, hyperbaric chamber, and amputation. This is an HAI, hospital acquired infection. Osteomalacia. This is vitamin D, softening of the bone, 24-hour diet recall. Vitamin D needs calcium for absorption. You do weight-bearing exercises. NSAIDs, you take these with food to avoid GI, bleed, and ulcers. NSAIDs and corticosteroids can delay healing but help with inflammation. An estrogen antagonist is designed to mimic estrogen in parts of the body while blocking the effect in other parts. This is utilized for osteoporosis. Acute compartment syndrome. This is where pain is not relieved by pain meds. Increased pressure that results in decreased circulation. Do not elevate or apply ice. This may be treated with a fasciotomy. The six P's for compartment syndrome which is the neurovascular assessment, include pain, which is unrelieved by pain meds, pressure, which is tingling and numbness, paralysis, which is loss of movement, paresthesia, which is increased edema, pallor, which is decreased oxygen, and pulselessness. Complex regional pain syndrome. This is also known as reflex sympathetic dystrophy. This is the dysfunction of central and peripheral nervous system that leads to severe chronic pain. Pain happens after surgery, traumatic injury, or myocardial infarction. The nurse's priority is to assess and report respiratory complications and follow a following a procedure. Close reduction is the most common non-surgical method for managing a simple fracture. Moderate sedation is used and the provider moves the bone ends to realign. An x-ray confirms that the bone ends are approximated, which is aligned, before the bone is immobilized, and a splint or other device is applied to keep the bone in alignment. Open reduction and internal fixation, ORIF, is a type of surgery that is used to stabilize and heal a broken bone. Pins, screws, plates, and sometimes prosthesis are used to allow the bone to heal. External fixation is a surgical procedure in which pins or wires are inserted through the skin and infected bone and then connected to a rigid external frame outside the body to stabilize the fracture during healing. A disadvantage of external fixation is an increased risk for pin site infection. Pin site infections can lead to osteomyelitis. Always assess the patient with a fracture for hemorrhagic shock because the bones are highly vascularized. A pelvic fracture complication is hematuria because the bone could puncture the bladder and that leaves a patient at risk for hypovolemic shock. A vertebroplasty is an injection of bone cement through the skin directly into the vertebral fracture site. The discharge instructions are bed rest, analgesics, nerve blocks, and physical therapy. 
Nurse care is to monitor and record vital signs and frequent neurological assessment and report any changes. Monitor for complications such as bleeding at the puncture site or shortness of breath. A kyphoplasty is a minimally invasive procedure used to treat vertebral compression fractures by inflating a balloon to restore bone height. Fat embolism syndrome is the release of fat globules from the yellow bone marrow into the blood vessels within 12 to 48 hours following a fracture. It's very common in pelvis and hip fractures. The signs and symptoms include hypoxemia, dyspnea, tachy tachypnea, followed by headache, lethargy, agitation, seizures, and rash. The bone healing stages. Stage 1, hematoma, and that's 24 to 72 hours. Stage 2 is granulation, that's 3 days to 2 weeks. Stage 3 is vascular to cellular, that's 3 to 6 weeks. Stage four is osteoblast proliferation. That's three to eight weeks. And stage five is bone remodeling. That's four to six weeks. So think H-G-V-O-B. Position degrees. High Fowler is 90. Semi Fowler is 30. Fowler is 45. When the patient has a skeletal traction device, you should always assess the pen sites. You can use opioids, non-opioids, anti-inflammatory medications, or muscle relaxants for pain management with fractures. You should administer a broad-spectrum antibiotic before orthopedic surgery and a few doses after surgery. Assess hematocrit and hemoglobin, calcium and phosphorus levels when your patient has a fracture or break. Hematocrit and hemoglobin you assess that after a fracture, and you also show an ESR can show inflammatory response. You should wear goggles to protect your eyes when doing any procedure that bodily fluids can enter them. Interocular pressure, or IOP. To prevent in- increases in interocular pressure, teach the patient and family about activity restrictions. Activities that can cause a sudden rise in IOP are bending from the waist, lifting objects over 10 pounds, sneezing and coughing, and blowing your nose or vomiting. A tonometer readings are indicated for all patients older than 40 years of age. Adults with family history of glaucoma should have their IOP measured once or twice a year. A gonioscopy is a test performed when a high IOP is found and determines whether open angle or closed angle glaucoma is present. Glaucoma, angle closure is an emergency. Increased interocular pressure. Minimize activities that increase IOP. Results in loss of peripheral vision or blindness. The most common type is open angle glaucoma. Cataract is blurred vision, no pain, surgery and drops are the only treatment. Myopia is nearsightedness. This is where near objects appear clear, but objects farther away look blurry. Hyperopia is farsightedness. You can see distant objects clearly, but objects nearby may be blurry. Eye irrigation, pour or syringe the fluid slowly and steadily from no more than five centimeters away onto the surface of the eye, inside the lower eyelid and under the upper eyelid. If if possible, evert the upper eyelid to access all of the upper conjunctival fornix. Tinnitus is ringing in the ears. The proper technique for assessing with an otoscope is normal eardrum appearance. This is where they inject air into the external ear canal to test eardrum mobility. A normal eardrum appearance is pearly or gray in color and see-through. Conductive hearing loss is physical damage to the tympanic membrane. The eustachian tube fills with fluid causing otitis media, which is an ear infection. Sensioneural hearing loss occurs when the inner ear or auditory nerve, cranial nerve number eight, is damaged. Occipital 
occupational hazard exposure to loud noises, which would be sawmill workers and jackhammer people. Perforated tympanic membrane. This is with progression the eardrum spontaneously perforates and pus or blood drains from the ear. The patient usually has a marked decrease in pain as the pressure on the middle ear structure is relieved. To reduce the risk for infection, you wash your hands. Do not use small objects such as cotton tip applicators, matches, toothpicks, keys, or hairpins to clean your external ear canal. Avoid or wear head and ear protection during activities with the risk for head or ear trauma, such as wrestling, boxing, motorcycle riding, and skateboarding. When you're recovering from a tympanoplasty, advise the client to avoid straighting when they have a bowel movement, avoid drinking water or fluids through a straw for two to three weeks, avoid air travel, avoid excessive coughing, avoid people with respiratory infections, and when blowing, blowing their nose, blow gently without blocking either nostril and open and with their mouth open. When you care for the hearing aids, you keep the hearing aid dry. You clean the ear mold with mild soap and water while avoiding excessive wetting. Use a soft toothbrush or brush that came with the device and clean the debris from the hole in the middle of the part that goes into your ear. Turn off the hearing aid when not in use and check and replace the bladderies frequently. Meniere's disease is caused by the buildup of fluid in the inner ear, the vestibular cochlear nerve. You have tinnitus and vertigo. Incidences of certain disorders and ethnic groups include African, which is sickle cell and cystic fibrosis, um, Jewish, which would be cystic fibrosis and Tay-Sachs, and Asian is cystic fibrosis fibrosis and osteoarthritis. <clears throat> Wound healing. Primary is sutures. Secondary is deep into the surface and tertiary intention is inside out. Wound healing is also hemostasis, which is a blood clot, inflammatory, which is scab and cleaning. Prolifer proliferative is granulation and remodeling is also known as the maturation stage and um, it results in a scar. Here's some terms that we need to know. Eschar is necrotic tissue that appears like a layer of black, gray, or brown collagen, maybe dry and leathery, or full of exudate and yellow or tan in appearance. Tuddling. Tunneling is hidden wounds that extend from the primary wound into the surrounding tissues. Blanching is skin that remains white or pale for longer than normal when pressed. Maceration is softening of the skin. A fistula is a tunnel that can connect two bodily cavities. This is a common complication after multiple abdominal surgeries. <clears throat> Evisceration is a total separation. It's a surgical emergency, and this is where the organ pops out. Dehiscence is a separation. It's usually when the first, um, which when trying the first intention of healing, where the surgical wound pops open. A coude catheter is a urinary catheter with the tip curved upward, and this is for patients with BPH and too much scar tissue to get up into the bladder. The Braden scale is the scale that consists of six subscales, and the total score ranges from 6 to 23. A lower Braden scale and score indicates higher levels of risk for pressure ulcer development. A Norton scale is the five subscale score, um, and a lower Norton score indicates higher levels of risk for oppressor ulcer development. So basically keep in mind that the lower the score, the higher the levels of risk for Braden and Norton. But the Braden scale has six subscales. Um, so the Braden is used to predict risk for ulcers. The CAM is what we use to help recognize delirium, which is the confusion assessment method. And the Morse fall scale is a set of questions used to determine the level of fall risk the patient is. Okay, so here's drainage. Serous is little cellular matter. It's clear, watery, watery and typically um, clean wounds. Sanguinous indicates damage to capillaries, deep or highly vascular areas, and it's bloody. Serosanguinous 
mostly seen in new wounds, it's blood-tinged fluid, and it's bloody and serous. Purulent is yellow or blue-green pus caused by bacteria. It's creamy, thick, and yellow. And purosanguinous is red-tinged pus. It indicates small vessels in the wound have ruptured. This would be bloody pus. Okay, so the risk for pressure ulcers is uh, the lack of immobility, excessive moisture or incontinence, aging skin, and undernourishment. Measurement is the key way to determine the progression or healing of the wound. Stage one is non-blanchable erythema of an intact skin. Stage two is partial thickness, loss with exposed dermis. This is a popped blister. Stage three is full thickness, skin loss with fat visible. And stage four is full thickness, loss of skin and tissue, muscle, tendon, ligament, or bone is showing. And then finally, unstageable is obscured full thickness, skin and tissue loss. A maroon-like looking bruise is a deep tissue injury. Psoriasis is common, red skin, silvery-like scales, which is patches of psoriasis, and itching, lots of itching. The, the um, prescriptions is tazotine, which is a contraceptive measure, Adalimubab is increased risk for infection, and Humira, which is an injectable. Also know that the prescriptions are highly expensive. Acute versus chronic wounds. Acute is short duration, and they heal spontaneously without complications through the three phases of wound healing. Chronic is long duration and exceed expected length of, of recovery because normal wound healing has been interrupted by infection, trauma, ischemia, or edema. MRSA is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. You do the swab test inside the nose, armpit, or groin, and delafloxacin is the, most, is the first fluoroquinolin that's demonstrated to be effective against MRSA infections. Interventions de to decrease microbes in patients include bathing patients with chlorhexidine wipes and administering nasal mupuracin ointment. The inflammatory response begins at the time of injury and lasts three to five days. White blood cells or macrophages migrate into the wound, the signs and symptoms of edema, pain, erythema, and warmth. Cellulitis is the inflammation of the skin and subcutaneous tissue extending beyond the area of injury. Age-related skin changes. For infants and children, skin is thinner and more permeable than that of adults. Think a diaper rash. The sweat glands are not fully developed and the thermal regulation concerns, um, you wouldn't want to swaddle to maintain the body heat. Adolescents and adults, the sex hormones, puberty, sweat gland activity increased, acne and body odor. Older adults, think sweat gland diminishes, drier skin, thinner tissue layer, decreased arterial blood flow, increased capillary fragility, and more chronic diseases like liver dysfunction. Pruritus is itching. It's caused by stimulation of itch-specific nerve fibers. Physical or chemical agents either activate nerve fibers directly or stimulate the release of chemical mediators like histamine, which then act on itch receptors. Okay, so a punch biopsy is the most common technique. It's a small circular cutting instrument or punch ranging in diameter from two to six millimeters. A woods light is a handheld, long, wavelength, ultraviolet black light. A shave biopsy is to remove only the part of skin that rises above the surrounding tissue when injected with local anesthetic. A scalpel or razor blade is moved parallel to the skin surface to remove the tissue specimen. The vascular study is the arterial blood flow study. This is where they use ultrasound to assess the flow of the blood and the arteries. A dioscopy is a painless technique to eliminate erythema caused by increased blood flow to the skin, thereby easing the inspection of skin lesions. Excision is a deep excision with a scalpel followed by closure with sutures. Excisional biopsies are more uncomfortable than punch or shave biopsies while healing. The methods to collect cultures. 
So you're going to use potassium hydroxide for fungal. You're going to use vessel, vesicle fluid and viral tube, and you place that on ice. And a cotton tip applicator for suspected bacterial infection. A viral, spection, viral specimen, you're going to use a Tanznix smear. So for a fungal, you're going to use antifungal. Bacterial is antibiotics, and viral is antiviral. The first step for a healthcare worker and a needle stick injury is to wash your hands. <clears throat> Transmission precautions. Example of disease, match with precaution. Identify PPE and go with that precaution. So here we go on drains. A pin, pin row drain. Pin rose drain is a flexible, flat latex tube. It looks like a straw that is placed in the wound bed, but usually not sutured into place. A clip or pin may be attached to the drain at the insertion site to keep it from slipping into the wound. A Jackson Pratt or JP is used to eliminate fluid based off of pressure. It has a bulb and a tube. A Hemovac is used for orthopedic surgery. This is spring loaded to pull the fluid. ADPI is assess, diagnose, plan, implement, and evaluate. Lupus, or SLE, is a chronic and progressive autoimmune immune disorder in which inflammatory and immune attacks occur against multiple self tissues and organs. Butterfly rash. You're going to test using the ANA increase, which is an anti-nuclear antibody, and ESR. You wear skin protection clothing and monitor skin changes daily. That's what you're going to tell your patient. Lyme disease is a tick bite. It's common in northern regions, and timing is key. The early stage is flu-like symptoms, a bullseye rash with joint stiffness. Stage two is dizziness, carditis, and CNS and disorders. Stage three is memory problems. Herpes viral vesicles. You need to start the antiviral within 72 hours. A burn victim you need to think about what that might do to the electrolytes, and that's going to cause dehydration. Candidiasis. This is fungal. Candidiasis is associated with burning and itching. Oral lesions is thrush. They appear as creamy white plaques on an inflamed mucous membrane. Cracks or fissures at the corners of the mouth may be present. In the body, infected skin appears moist, red, and irritated, and it usually burns or itches. If you have bed bugs, you're going to use corticosteroids to reduce itching. Scabies, you're going to use permethrin. And acnitic keratosis, you're going to use imiquimod. What factors can influence diffusion or gas exchange? Ventilation and expiration, normal equals adequate perfusion, Decreased equals inadequate exchange, that is COPD, asthma, pneumonia, and smoking. <clears throat> Late signs of hypoxemia is cyanosis, cool, clammy skin, use of accessory muscles, retractions, hypotension, and arrhythmias. Ginkgo biloba improves memory. Ginseng increases physical endurance. Chamomile is an anti-inflammatory and calming. Echinacea enhances immunity, and aloe is for wound healing. Stephen John syndrome, or SJS, is life-threatening cutaneous reactions most commonly triggered by a drug. The signs and symptoms is fever, extensive necrosis, epidermal detachment, ooh, and mucous membrane involvement in most cases. The neurovascular, neurovascular assessment are the six P's, pain, pressure, pallor, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis, and pulselessness. The types of pain, nociceptive, which is a result of actual or potential tissue damage. Somatic is cutaneous, sharp and throbbing, or deep, dull and aching. Visceral is organs and lining of the body cavity causing pain. Acute is short duration, chronic lasts six or more months or longer, and neuropathic is nerve with or without tissue damage. Nutrition's role in healing. 
Protein and fluids promote healing. If you see mucus, you always ask follow-up questions. HIV. Oh, never mind. Osteoarthritis. The risk factors include, include female aging, obesity, and trauma. This is a unilateral chronic joint pain, crepitus, and that's the cracking sound. You're going to treat this with NSAIDs. This is the short-term use. Tylenol, cortisone injections, tramadol, and the labs are going to show an elevated ESR. The maximum amount of Tylenol in 24 hours is 4 grams or 4,000 milligrams. Rheumatoid arthritis. This is a type 3 hypersensitivity. The CD4 stimulates cytokines. For acute rheumatoid arthritis, you use ice. You, the test you use for this is a CT scan. Lab levels is elevated rheumatoid factor, anti-nuclear antibody, which is ANA and ER, ESR. <clears throat> Outcomes for prescriptions is NSAIDs, which is short-term use, methotrexate, leflunamide, and the biological response modifiers, and also other immunosuppressive agents. The signs and symptoms are bilateral, symmetric, Multiple joints, and this usually affects upper extremities first, and then the distal interphalangeal joints of hands are spared, and it's systemic. You're going to use uh, a paraffin wax dip for rheumatoid arthritis hand pains. Chagrin syndrome is a condition of which the patient has dry eyes, um, dry mouth, and dry vagina. This health problem may occur as a separate condition or be associated with late-stage rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune arthritis-related diseases. Gout is an inflammatory response to high levels of uric acid. Crystals form, which is the purine in the synovial fluid, and small white nodules or trophi form in the subcutaneous tissue. Gout produces painful joints and severely limits activity during acute flare-ups. It, it usually affects the joint of the great toe, but can occur in the feet, ankles, knees, hands, and wrists. Client education, you're going to tell them to eat a low purine diet, which is no red meat, and they're going to treat it with a low purine diet and NSAIDs. <clears throat> Scleroderma is a chronic autoimmune connective tissue disease. This is a lack or disruption of blood supply to the bone caused by steroid therapy. You're going to experience pain, stiffness, and muscle weakness. Prescriptions to use is corticosteroids, steroids, and the test to use are CT scan and MRI. Steroid use increases blood glucose levels and increases white blood cell counts. All right, so here's some doshids calc. If you're going to go from kilograms to pounds, you're going to multiply by 2.2. Milliliters to ounce, there's 30 milliliters to one ounce. Micrograms to milligrams, there's a thousand micrograms to one milligram. Teaspoons to milliliters, there's 15, I'm sorry, tablespoons to milliliters. There's 15 tablespoons to one milliliter. All right, so bear with me on these prescription names. Meclizine, avoid caffeine. Zoledronic acid can cause jaw osteonecrosis. You take biophosphonates on an empty stomach. Administration of alanindronate for osteoporosis. You need to make sure the client will take this while sitting upright and with a full glass of water. Relaxophene. This increases bone mineral density, reduces bone reabsorption, and reduces the incidence of osteoporotic vertebral fractures. This is not given to women with a history of thromboembolism. Hydroxychloroquine is an anti-malarial drug it's immunomodulating and an anti-clotting effect. It's used for lupus patients. Belly Moombob is mono, monoclo, monoclonal antibodies, and it's for SLE management or lupus management. Celecoxib is an NSAID. A Tanercept is a tumor necrosis factor. It's given by SureClick auto-injector two times weekly for three months. It's a serious infection risk for TB and lymphoma. Methotrexate is immune modulators, also known as disease-modifying arth 
anti-rheumatic drugs, which is DMARDs. Um, <clears throat> educate on infection control and avoid crowds. Leflunamide is a slow-acting immune-modulating drug that helps diminish inflammatory symptoms of joint swelling and stiffness and improves mobility. This drug is generally prescribed as a loading dose for three days, followed by a lower dose daily thereafter. Anoxaparin is a low molecular weight heparin, and it's a prophylactic. Prednisone is a corticor steroid used for bronchospasm and inflammatory problems within and outside the lung. Efavirins is a non-nucleoside reverse strength transcript A inhibitor, which is an NNRTI. These drugs work by binding directly to the HIV enzyme reverse transcriptase, preventing viral cell DNA, DNA replication. Atanzavir and ritonavir is they they block this is these drugs block the HIV enzyme preventing viral replication and release of viral particles. <clears throat> Teach patients to report jaundice, nausea, vomiting, or subde- severe abdominal pain because these drugs can induce liver toxicity, and also remind the patients to avoid St. John's wort because it'll reduce the effectiveness. And it reduces the effectiveness of all protein protease inhibitors. Ibuprofen is an NSAID. Pregabapentin and gabapentin are used for neuropathic pain, but gabapentin is the most commonly used. For a total hip, you're going to use the abduction pillow. You're going to stop anticoagulants pre-op, and you're going to start again 24 hours post-op, and then you're going to have the patient take them for several weeks. A femoral nerve block, their side effects include temporary nerve injury, allergic reaction, hematoma, and infection at the injection site. Common common complications of continuous nerve block is metallic taste, tinnitus, nervousness, slurred speech, bradycardia, hypotension, decreased respirations, and seizures. Arthrocentesis is an invasive diagnostic procedure performed at the bedside or in a primary health care provider's office to aspirate a sample of synovial fluid for analysis and to relieve pressure caused by excess fluid. To detect IgM and IgG antibodies, you're going to use the fourth generation HIV assay. A convalescent serum is artificial passive. Stem cells are immature, undifferentiated cells. The most common acquired hospital acquired infection is C. diff. Previous exposure to antibiotics. This is impaired body defense caused by underlying disease or immunodeficiencies. This is severe illness, invasive procedures and devices, repeated hospitalization, especially in intensive care, and advanced age. This is all causes for C. diff. MDRO treatments is you're going to take all medications as prescribed. They're going to do a nasal swab, cultures and sensitivities of wound and skin, blood, sputum, urine, and cerebral spinal fluid, a complete blood count with a differential. And some institutions require screening cultures at admission or in specialty units like the ICU. The most definitive way to diagnose something is a biopsy. Active immunity is where the antigen enters. Antibodies are made to fight against the antigen. The body played an active role. Natural active immunity is where the body plays an active role, the most effective type of adaptive immunity, and is the longest lasting. Artificial active immunity is a vaccination or immunization. Passive immunity is where the antibodies from mom to baby, think tears, saliva, breast milk, or IgA. Cell-mediated regulator T-cells is an autoimmune disease. Treg's less active is at risk for systemic inflammatory inflammatory disease. The left shift is where neutrophils, phagocytosis, Circulating bands where the body can't produce enough mature neutrophils to keep pace with the infection. 
The chain of infection is the infectious agent, the reservoir, portal of exit, mode of transmission, portal of entry, and the host. The ELSA test is used, ELISA test is used to detect antibodies in the blood, measuring the viral load of HIV. The mode of transmissions is droplet or airborne. This is respiratory. GI is Shigella, Simonella, and Hepatitis A. Skin and mucous membranes is HSV and Varicella. Blood and bloody fluids is HIV, Hep, B, and C, and transplacental. The sterile field is used to maintain sterility. Never reach across the sterile field. A wet field is not sterile, and do not turn away from a sterile field. Psychosocial needs is communication and interpersonal skills. Interpersonal skills, sorry. Communication and interpersonal skills are especially important in caring for patients' psychosocial needs. If a patient has histoplasmosis, you're going to assess for dyspnea. Now for the Kahoot review. Which physiological response indicates the patient is experiencing pain? This would be a blood pressure of 146 over 85. What is the sound you would hear if a patient had fluid in their lungs? The answer is crackles. True or false? Subjective data is the most reliable dictator of pain, indicator of pain. This is true. What is the physiological effect of immobility in a geriatric patient? This is muscle atrophy. What is a primary cause of pressure injuries? This is de- decreased tissue perfusion. What is a priority nursing, nursing intervention for a patient with narcolepsy? You're going to educate the patient that driving may be dangerous. True or false, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, physiological level should be a priority. This is true. A client is anxious, restless, having dyspnea, increased respiration rate, and tachycardia. The patient is experiencing what? They're experiencing hypoxia. Your client begins to fall and you're in close proximity. What do you do? You slide the client down your leg while guiding to seated or lying position. True or false, the nurse should avoid leaving the client unattended to prevent injury during routine hygiene care. This is true. Why do we count respirations for a full minute in an older adult while sleeping? It's because the rhythm and the rate can be irregular. True or false, turning a client at least every two hours is the best treatment to protect the client's entogment. This is true. What is a primary health promotion strategy to prevent infection? This is use standard precautions. True or false, when providing oral care for a client who is immobile, you should use your thumb and index finger to hold the mouth. False. True or false, limiting alcohol consumption two hours prior to bedtime will assist to alleviate symptoms with insomnia. This is false. It's four hours. True or false, if a client had a four-plus pitting edema in their legs, you should elevate the lower extremities. This is true. True or false, a high-fiber diet will help the patient maintain and prevent complications with elimination patterns. This is true. True or false, monitoring intake and output should be included in the plan of care for a patient with diarrhea. This is true. True or false, your patient is becoming short of breath. You should lie the patient flat so they can rest. This is false. You should put them in high fowlers. Your patient has a a pimple on their face that is oozing when squeezed. The affected area hurts. What would this be? This is acute and localized. What does RACED stand for? Rescue, alarm, contain, extinguish. True or false? Removement... Removal of stagnant water sources is an example of how to remove vector-borne pathogens. This is true. A complication of immobility on this musculoskeletal system would be joint contractures. What, What would be a complication of immobility on the cardiovascular system? This is venous stasis. What is a complication of immobility on the respiratory system? This is atelectasis. What is a complication of immobility on the urinary system? This is urinary retention. 
Diarrhea is a complication of immobility on the gastrointestinal system. True or false? This is false. It's constipation is a complication. What nursing intervention should the nurse implement to prevent complications of immobility on the integumentaries? Integumentary system. <laughs> Assist the client to turn every two hours. True or false? Decreasing fluid, fiber, and movement will help a patient who is experiencing constipation. This is false. It's increasing fluid, fiber, and movement. What should the nurse include in nursing interventions with a patient who is on strict bed rest? Assess the client for pressure injuries. Always assess or inspect. True or false, range of motion exercises prevent the worsening of contractures. True. Your client is diagnosed with early osteoporosis. Which intervention is most applicable to your client? This is where you're going to institute an exercise plan that includes weight-bearing activities. A client on bed rest reports swelling and warmth around the open fracture site. What should the nurse do? You're going to assess for circulation in the distal extremities. Your patient had surgery five days ago. What statement indicates a care plan is successful? I am not using as much pain meds as I did yesterday. True or false, a client can bear weight on a fractured left tibia in a fiberglass cast. False. Which device would be best for a client with obesity and immobility? This would be a mechanical lift. A client has an unsteady gait and fatigue. Which pain of, of equipment should be used to help the client ambulate? This is a transfer belt. How should the nurse transfer a client with paraplegia and is immobile? A mechanical lift. True or false, a paraplegic client with long-standing mobility problems should be transferred with a transfer board to increase independence. This is true. You're caring for a patient with plantar flexion and foot drop. Which piece of equipment should be used? You're going to use a footboard placed at the end of the bed. True or false, osteoporosis is a decrease in bone density that increases fractures. This is true. Which of the flooring is a non-invasive... Oh, which, is the, which of the following is a non-invasive radio, radiograph scan to assess bone mineral density? This is the dual x-ray absorbmetry scale, which is a DEXA scan. True or false, a deputrin contracture is a flexion contracture. This is true. Which population typically has a decreased incidence of osteoporosis in comparison to Euro-Americans? This is African Americans. True or false, the best intervention to implement for a client with limited mobility who cannot move independently is active range of motion. False, this would be passive range of motion. What is a priority notion diagnosis for a client with immobility? Ineffective breathing pattern. True or false, to promote independence, the nurse should not allow the client to perform active daily living that they can do. This is false. They should promote, wait, to promote independence, the nurse should not allow the client, they should allow them, sorry, that's false. True or false, priority nursing diagnosis for a client with metastatic bone disease is a risk for infection. False. True or false, your client is post-op for a bunion bunionectomy. You should assess the neurovascular tests, stats, and the surgical foot. True. Which musculoskeletal disorder should a Chinese American client be educated upon that is common with their ethnicity? Osteoporosis. What should the nurse do to address the client's physiological needs? Assess the client's spiritual needs that are culturally appropriate. True or false, a nurse should delegate a UAP to assist a newly post-op client into the restroom. This is false. What is excess stress on a muscle? A strain. True or false? Hemiplasia is a paralysis of the lower trunk and bilateral lower extremities, or BLE. This is false. True or false? A sprain is a stretch injury of an anterior ligament. This is true. Which client is most at risk to develop osteoporosis? 
a sedentary 65-year-old woman who smokes daily. True or false, vancomycin is given as treatment for acute osteomyelitis. This is true. A client with a ganglion cyst complains of numbness and tingling distal to the cyst. What medication should be used? A cortisone injection. True or false, vitamin D is needed for calcium absor absorption. This is true. True or false, NSAID should be taken on an empty stomach to minimize gastric upset. This is false. NSAID should be taken with food. True or false, foot arch pain is associated with plantar fasciitis. True. True or false, osteomyelitis is bone softening. That's false. Osteomyelitis is the infection of the bone. Osteomalacia is bone softening. Baseball players commonly suffer this injury, pain when abducting the arm. This is a rotator cuff tear. True or false, a pathological fracture results from minimal trauma to the bone when weakened by disease. This is true. True or false, vertebrae fractures are associated with compression fractures. This is true. What should be done immediately after an ankle injury? Rice, rest, ice, compress, elevate. True or false, the most common method of reducing and immobilizing a fracture is open reduction and internal fixation, or ORIF. This is true. True or false, ice therapy controls swelling. This is true. What is a priority nursing diagnosis after surgery to repair a fracture? Acute pain. What client should the nurse see first? This is a patient with sudden increasing pain, not relieved by pain meds and a fractured leg. Your, cli your, client become, ugh, your client becomes shortness of breath and has dyspnea. What should the nurse do first? You're gonna position the client in high fowlers. True or false? Your client is post-op for, for a vertebroplasty. The nurse should educate the patient can drive within 24 hours. This is false. True or false, moderate sedation is used for a closed bone reduction. This is true. What diagnostic test is used to detect osteoporosis? This is a bone scan. What diagnostic test determines compression fractures of the spine? This is a computed tomography or a CT scan. What is an example of when a nurse should be using eye protection? while irrigating a wound. True or false, the nurse should educate a patient with glaucoma. It is safe to bend over and tie your shoes. This is false. True or false, nearsighted is hyperopia and farsighted is myopia. This is false. Nearsighted is myopia and farsighted is hyperopia. True or false, American Indians and Hispanic Americans are higher risk to develop glaucoma. This is true. And I'm sorry, African Americans and Hispanic Americans are higher risk to develop glaucoma. This is true. A client with asthma is prescribed a glaucoma medication. Which medication class is contraindicated with asthma? These are beta blockers. The nurse observes, observes bone and tendon at the base of the wound. Which, stained, which stage would this be? This is four, or Roman numeral, numeral IV. True or false, protein supplements have amino acids that promote wound healing. This is true. A shallow, open, reddened ulcer with no slaw would be considered which wound stage? Stage two, or Roman numeral II. What is the treatment for psoriasis? Apply corticosteroids as ordered. What are the instructions for a client after a skin biopsy? You're gonna keep the dressing intact and dry for eight to 10 hours. True or false, your client has an infected draining pressure ulcer. The client should be placed on contact precautions. This is true. True or false? Wound healing is negatively impacted by poor nutrition. This is true. 
True or false, the nurse should massage bony prominences to prevent skin breakdown and for an immobile client. This is false. Which phase would healing occur at a time of injury and last about three to five days? This is the inflammatory stage. True or false, I'll... Alginate dressings are used for stage 3 presser ulcers. They're highly absorbent fabric derived from seaweed. This is true. A client is diagnosed with herpes zoster, shingles. What is the correct pharmacological management for herpes zoster? Antivirals should be started within the first 72 hours following eruption. True or false? Antiretroviral medications inhibit viral replication, which is how they are used to treat HIV. This is true. True or false? Clients with HIV being treated with intergase inhibitors should take the medication with food. This is true. A client who has lupus reports fatigue, joint tenderness, and difficulty urinating. Which findings can the nurse expect? Positive antibodies titer, which is a positive ANAs titer. Which lab is associated with osteoarthritis? This is slightly increased ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. True or false, an anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide or anti-CCP is associated with early rheumatoid arthritis. This is true. The lack of or disruption in the blood supply to the affected bone is caused by chronic steroid therapy is called osteonecrosis. True or false, lupus is associated with dry, scaly, raised butterfly rash. This is true. True or false, warm, moist heat such as paraffin wax dip will assist the pain associated with rheumatoid arthritis. This is true. Acute inflammation with rheumatoid arthritis, the nurse should apply ice. This is true. The side effects for NNRTIs are liver toxicity, headache, rash, and anemia. The potential side effects for integrase inhibitors is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and headache. Protase inhibitors is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, headache, and rash. After determining the potential side effects of NNRTIs, you would, the first provider would order the following labs, a CBC and a urinalysis. And the reason you'd be drawing these labs is to see how the liver is functioning and to see if you have low bl- red blood cells. To determine, the nurse knows that in order to be diagnosed with AIDS, the patient needs to have low CD4 T cells and normal CD8 count. The following lab results you would expect for a systemic lupus patient is for SLE is an ANA tither positive, an increased C3 and C4 Increase bun and increase creatine. Blurred vision is primary open angle glaucoma and cataracts. Sudden blurred vision is primary angle glaucoma. Headaches is angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma. Halos and vision is primary angle, open angle, and cataracts. Smudge glasses is cataracts. Severe pain is primary angle glaucoma closure. Mild eye aching is primary open angle glaucoma. Decreased color perception is cataracts. Pupil that does not react to light, that's primary angle closure glaucoma. Floaters are ineffective. Recent asthma diagnosis, ineffective. IOP measurement of 11 milligram millimeters per Hg is effective. Blood pressure, 122 over 78, effective. 
patient with Hispanic or African American heritage, effective. Mild pain in eyes, ineffective. Red and sclera, ineffective.